This Quran that we find as one complete book, the sight as a complete book, memorize as a complete book. One of the distinctions of this Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions is that inna nahnu nazzalna alayka Quran Tanzila. Quran Tanzila. That it came piece by piece. <coughs> and that's a distinction that belongs to Quran unlike all the previous books. That over a period of 23 years, Starting from Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Lazi Khalaq, it slowly developed, addressed the community, the society, the people who were the first recipients of these words. But today we read that whole book as one book. It creates an important question for us that if at the time of its revelation the need was there to reveal it piece by piece, what should we do when we find ourselves in a situation where we find the whole Quran together but we need to assign different priorities to it? This priority and, and, and gradation of things in Quran is an important part. Uliyat, what, what takes preference, what takes next. And that is oftentimes gets mixed up in our society, in our thinking. Because we find it all, well, this, there is this verse in the Quran, there is this verse in the Quran. And we fail to apply it according to the situation and circumstance where it should stand. And we oftentimes attach importance to things that are of lesser importance and attach greater importance to other things. We do not have freedom anymore to say this part of the Quran will not apply today, it will apply in the future. We cannot do that. I see people who divide society, oh, we are in a Makkan period now, or we are in a Madinan period now. You cannot decide that. Because that was that time. We, we, are, not, we, are, not, we, we are neither in Makkan nor Madinan period. We are in our own time. And so what should we do about this Quran that we find as a whole, but we need to pick from it? according to the situation and circumstances. And that is where the importance of priorities and gradations in the Quran comes into being. That is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he revealed, he sent this book with the messenger, he revealed kitab. Whenever he sees, you are kitab wal hikmah. The hikmah comes with kitab. And hikmah is not something that can be written and someone can write a book and say, this is the hikmah. Because hikmah applies according to the situation, circumstance, understanding, judgment of people at the time it's happening. And that hikmah is, is learned through, through experience and practice and knowledge of the society. And that's where the really true understanding of the priorities comes into being. <coughs> One of the great lessons in the mix-up of these priorities is this hadith that I found in Ibn Majah narrated by Ibn Umar radiallahu anh, who says, رَأَيْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ يَتُوفُ الْكَعْبَ وَهُوَ يَقُولُ 
I saw Prophet ﷺ going around the Kaaba and heard him saying this. Ma atiyaba ka wa atiyaba rihak. How great, good, pleasant are you and how pleasant is the whole air surrounding you. Ma azama ka wa azama hurmatak. How great are you and how great is the sanctity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed around you. And we all can identify with that. Those of us who have been favored by Allah to be able to visit that place, our hearts filled with awe and reverence for that place when we take utmost care not to dis disrespect that place. We enter that house with, with shivering and don't want to do anything to violate the the sanctity of that place. And then Prophet says Prophet Muhammad sallallahu continued and said, Wallazi nafsu Muhammadun biyadihi la hurmatu mu'min inda Allah ta'ala azam hurmatun minka. That the sanctity of a believer in the eyes of Allah is soared by the one in whose hands is his life is greater than your sanctity. Maluhu his possessions, wealth, damuhu, his blood, his life, bihi illa khayra. And that what thought you carry in your heart about the next person has greater level of sanctity than that house of Allah which none of us would ever dare to violate its sanctity. Whose sanctity is so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam to this earth who took Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam and drew a boundary not around the house but miles away from the house. That all of that is haram. No tree should be cut in that area, no insect should be killed unless it is absolutely necessary. If you want to go for the Hajj and Umrah, you must put on your state of sanctity, your ahram, before you enter those limits of the haram. Mm. Such was the greatness of the sanctity of that house of Allah. And that is what the Prophet ﷺ compared to the sanctity of a believer, of a human being. That he do not violate his space you do not violate his respect and not only in what is manifest in your actions but what thoughts you carry in your heart about the other person. That is the extreme limit of the sanctity of a man and, 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 a, and a woman. And this is something that we oftentimes are not paying attention to when we are so, so absorbed in fulfilling of our duties and rituals, whether we are coming to prayer, whether we are uh, doing any, uh, going to Hajj or anything that is, we find we, we, is enjoined on us. We don't care about the other person. We want to rush to, to the place. I've been here praying for 30 years in America and every Friday announcement will be made. Brothers, please don't park your cars to block the neighbor's driveway. Because I feel Juma is obligatory, I have to get there, I have to be on time and I am willing to do whatever it takes and even if the neighbor's driveway is blocked, it's more important for me to And if we are finding ourselves in difficult, difficult situations and circumstances in today's world, it's because we have given up this message of humanity, the humanness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us through this Quran. That is what Prophet sallallahu lived by all his life. Respect for the person, his sanctity, his possession, his, 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 his living space, 
that must be respected under all circumstances. And whenever we do that, we reduce the ajr that we may get from fulfilling an obligatory duty. Because the other thing takes precedence over this. And that is where we need to place uh, importance to these gradations that exist. Umar ibn Khattab an once saw a person who came to the masjid, prayed the first prayer, and then he stood up and offered the sunnah prayer in exactly the same spot. He became upset with that person. And he said, do you know previous nations were destroyed because of this action? Such a grave thing to say for a simple act of praying the first and the sunnah in the same spot. What he meant from that was that there is a difference between what is first and what is sunnah. Keep in mind this difference, this gradation that exists in the from top to the bottom. But we take such strong stance on peripheral issues and give up the big issues. Unity, people being together, has a higher priority than many other things. When Musa al -Islam went in his absence, Bani Israel, Samiri created this god and Bani Israel started worshipping it. He came back and he became upset with his brother Harun and he took, started to shake him. And Harun al-Islam responded, Ya ibn umma la ta'khuz bil lihyati wa la bi rasi inni khashitu an taqoola farraqta bayna Bani Israel. They were doing shirk. And Harun al Islam, who was also a messenger himself, he didn't do anything, and Musa al Islam became upset with him and he tried to let that go, to wait until Musa comes back. So it doesn't create this dissension in the society. We take much more simpler issues and divide ourselves into so many groups based on those small minor issues. And that is where we lose the hikmah, the priorities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us. <laughs>